Welcome back. This is Booleans part two. We're going to be adding some details, just kind of fleshing out the shape. I'm going to start with the magazine here. I'm going to bevel out the edges using the same trick that I used in the last video, where instead of making a selection and beveling that, I just create a Boolean set to intersect and bevel the, the intersection. That way I don't have to worry about changing my selection edges or needing to, to add geometry and fix that later. I'd also get a little bit more control over how it interacts with cuts and subtractive booleans that I add on the sides there. You can add more divisions like I'm doing here and I don't need to worry about changing uh, really anything about that. Here I'm just going to clip off the top. That way it's not going to be too tall. I can adjust the height of the magazine. And I'm going to extrude it out. You can see it's inverted so just use a reverse node to fix that. And now I've got an interior and exterior part and I can just move that below the cuts that I'm going to add here on the sides. And you can see that the 3D shape actually follows along with all the cuts. And so now I can create as many cuts as I want. And that extrusion follows along with that. So I just got the, the extrusion below that Boolean in the network flow. I'm going to use a copy and translate here. I'm using a couple of procedural uh, tools based on the size of the cutter to adjust the spacing. I'm not thrilled with the front just yet. The blackout left it kind of unresolved. It still needs to have coils added, and there's a lot of detail in there. But I haven't exactly dialed in the transition from interior to exterior. But because booleans are so flexible, I can keep messing around with this right up until everything is dialed in. I'm trying a few different things here, I'm trying more rounded, more flat. I'm gonna try cutting out the center versus mirroring and extruding and kind of blowing out the sides so they transition in this bevel to the exterior. Nothing quite nails it down just yet. And this is something I'll keep coming back to as I work on this detail section. I'm looking for the best resolution here. If you're doing a lot of flat surfaces, obviously you don't need lots of divisions, but if you are doing curves, it does pay off to go high at this point. If you have more cuts than you need, it's going to look a lot better if you choose to use VDBs later on to create your high res mesh. And it's always easier to go from high to low using PyReduce than it is to try to add those divisions later. I need to get the coils in here and see what it's going to look like. I'm not sure exactly what shape I want to use for the coils yet though. For now I'm just going to set up a system for placing the coils. Copy and Transform is great for creating a bunch of instances, but it can be a little cumbersome when you're still trying to dial in the spacing and the size, especially if you're not sure exactly what shape you want to use yet. In the Transform parameter of the Copy and Transform, I'm just going to reference the bounding box of my coil shape, whatever that happens to be, and subtract a little bit out to make sure that the space between the coils is dynamic and that it changes as I change the size of the coils. This way I can really just worry about the size of the coils and the number and I don't have to keep moving things forward and backward trying to figure out the right size and then also make sure that it's placed correctly. The grip is still looking kind of like a blob so I'm going to transition over to that and start adding some divisions to fill it out and just using the soft select in the edit node. If you don't know where soft select is you can use the mouse wheel or you can just go into the edit interface and scroll down. There's a soft selection setting where you can also change the type of soft selection. Typically I'll use cubic, which is the default or change to linear, but there are a few other options in there. If you'd like to be able to see the fall off of your soft selection, you can turn it on with a visualizer. Sometimes it gets turned off by default, but if you find that you're missing it, just click on the visualizer button, then make sure that your color visualizers are active and you'll be able to see it represented as a red and yellow gradient. For the trigger guard, I'm just using a poly bridge. I beveled a couple of the loops to get smaller polygons for the footholds, and then just selected one for the beginning and one for the end. You can add as many divisions as you want and adjust the curvature of it. If you get something where it's kind of going back into itself or doing something weird, you might also have to adjust the winding. I'm just going to cut out a hole for the trigger to sit in. This is going to be kind of garbage geometry, so I'll have to fix this later, but I'm just going to use a boolean to knock out a hole there and give it some definition. For the trigger, I'm just going to use a curve. I have the curve set to NURBS, and then I'll convert it back to polygons. That way I get nice even divisions and I don't have to add them all manually. 
With the sweep interface, there is an option to sweep a grid built into the sweep interface. It wasn't giving me the shape that I wanted here though, so I just switched to a regular uh, one polygon grid and made sure that that's facing the correct direction so I could get that nice, flat, thin trigger profile. All right, now that I've got the shape, I'll go ahead and convert back to polygons and make sure to reverse it as well, since right now it's inside out. I'm gonna try to get a pretty high poly curve there just so that I have enough detail. Again, it's always better to be a little bit high on this part because you can always remove later with poly reduce. Here, I'm doing something I probably should have done earlier, which is swap out the cut for the magwell with a box that's sized based on the bounding box of the magazine itself. So again, I'm referencing bounding box using BB box and then just adding a little bit to it from whatever the size of the magazine is itself. I'm gonna start adding some barrel geometry here. I already have the tube cutting out the hole inside the coils, and I'm just gonna reference that with an object merge. It's one of my favorite things about Houdini is that you can use geometry you've already created and used elsewhere, reference it, and then do something else to it. In this case, I'm just gonna bring it in with an object merge, trim off the front, extrude it out and give it some thickness, and then I'll have a barrel that's exactly the same size as the tube that cuts out a hole in those coils. Now that the barrel's done, it's time to swap out the coils. The coils are still looking pretty bad, so I'm gonna swap them for tubes. The issue here is that the tubes are aligned to the initial block based on my code, so I'll need to change that up a little bit. So here I'm just gonna swap out the centroid Make sure it's referencing the centroid of the entire stack rather than just the initial block. The problem is that the block was a little bit higher and that it was mirrored for the bottom. So here, since I'm just using one tube, it needs to be in the exact center. So I'm just referencing that barrel cutter instead. Now I just need to move the initial tube back to the start. The rest of it, the spacing and all that stuff is working fine. I'm gonna tweak the bounding box code here for the spacing just a tad and copy that over to the z-axis and now i'm going to just increase my divisions make it a little bit more high poly i've got all that done i can add a couple of divisions inset it extrude it in bevel it we've got some detail on our coils now i'm just going to increase the length a little bit and barrel a little bit bigger there. Now that the coils are more finalized, I can start looking at refining the shape of the entire firearm. I'm going to take the top and kind of squeeze it in just to give it a little bit more of like kind of a hard surface at the top, less rounded. Bring that down. And now that I've got that, I'm going to bring the front out. One thing that I've kind of had trouble with here for this entire project is that I don't really like the rounded front, but I also don't like it just clipped off and flattened either. So here, what I'm gonna do is call the entire uh, body of the firearm. I'm gonna clip it, move it forward just a bit, and then use that as a boolean to cut out the front. So we've got this little inset at the front. And that feels a little bit better. Just need to adjust the scale and make sure it's not kind of weird at the top and the bottom in terms of size. Now for the top, what gun doesn't have a good rail system? I need to set up a Picatinny kind of rail. So with a grid, I'm just gonna add four divisions vertically, scale them in, kind of adjust the placement of those. And that, I'm now going to extrude out. I also need to extrude the base. So that's there. I wanna make sure that the extrusions are the same size and that everything's working in terms of placement when I go to duplicate it out with a copy. But there's a couple of steps I need to make sure work before that. I wanna do uh, UVs, so I'm gonna add those in. Now I'm also gonna extrude from both edges here. It wasn't gonna work with just one, so I extrude both sides and I'm just gonna use the copy and transform and use the size of that extrusion as the transform distance. Now that I've got that in place, I can go ahead and just make a ton of copies. I'm clipping it here, so I'm clipping off the bottom to get rid of unnecessary polygons there. Move it into place. 
Now that we've got it in place, I'm just kind of adjusting where the UVs are created in the network so they come after everything has been generated. Now I just need to adjust the size and the placement. Obviously, if you're making something that's meant to be realistic, you want to use specific measurements for something like this. Otherwise, it's going to look off. Here, it's sci-fi, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm clipping off the front and then doing a polyfill. But because I did that clip earlier at the bottom, it's getting a little bit of a curve underneath. So I just need to adjust where the clip is, make sure that it clips after I do the polyfill on the front. All right, so that's done. I'm just going to move it in and merge it within the main railgun network. There we go. Everything is looking pretty clean now. We've got our details. We've got our charting handle, coils. Now the last thing I want to add is a selector or select fire switch here. I'm just going to take a circle and extrude it out a little bit. I want to make sure though that it fits the side of the, the firearm, that it's kind of curved around the the side, so I'm just going to use a ray node for that. And once it's fit with that ray node, I'll extrude it out a little bit. Smoothing it shows there's some problems with the geometry. That one kind of big polygon with a bunch of divisions didn't look great, so I'm going to add an extrude. First, I'm going to bevel that edge, but then I'll add an extrude with a few different divisions. There's an inset. There you go. And I'll just do a fuse to get all of the central points kind of stuck together there. I've got some triangles at the center. Still not looking great with the smooth, but it looks all right without the smooth. So here we go. And there's our high poly version of this firearm. So in the next video, we'll look at taking this, this high poly version, and converting it to an actual high poly, uh, fully retopologized version, and a low poly version that's ready for baking. Thank you, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.